I'm going to talk about website design in this video, but I want to preface this by saying that I actually think this is one of the least important parts of uh, SEO in terms of how long you should spend on it. Okay, so make sure you do not spend too much time okay, designing your website because you don't need it to be the most beautiful website in the world, especially at the beginning. But you do need to make sure that the website is responsive. Okay, so that means that it changes um, if somebody looks at it on a desktop or on a mobile it will automatically change, okay? So most websites built on, for example, Elements, it should be responsive, but I'm gonna show you how to make sure that they're responsive, and you need to be constantly checking this. Your website has to be responsive, okay? Or Google will penalize you, and that is what, we, we just can't have that, okay? The other thing that you need to think about is speed. The website has to be quick for two reasons. Number one, because if it's too slow, again, Google will penalize you. But also, if it's very, very quick, then your um, bounce rate will be lower. Bounce rate. And if your bounce rate is lower, then your chance of being in the top three spots is much, much higher. Okay, so these two things are pretty much the only thing I think about. I don't really think about how the website looks. I don't care if it doesn't look like the best website, especially at first. Um, I would recommend probably just going with a white and um, maybe blue kind of website. So yeah, let's just get a bit more into the actual design here. Okay, so let's just have a look at a couple of um, competitors basically and kind of have a look at their websites. This looks like a WordPress website. This looks like exactly the kind of thing that I am gonna be making. Is this WordPress? WordPress, I think. It is WordPress, okay. I think, anyway, or maybe their blog is WordPress? Ooh, that's interesting. That's a really strange website. Oh my God, I hate this. This is apparently now what you have to have though, so I'm probably gonna have to show you guys how to um, install this at some point. Because legally, I think in Europe, you have to show that kind of stuff. Not 100% sure about that, I'll check, but. Uh, yeah, this is the kind of thing that I want. Um, the colors are very simple. Again, it's just white background with contrast. It looks like they've gone for a purple. I'm probably gonna go for a blue, blue color. So just keep that in mind. You want to make sure. I would. I would honestly just use white and then like use shades of blue or purple or red or you know whatever whatever you guys like in order to even their adverts are purple, which is pretty interesting. They probably made them themselves. To be honest, these are probably paid for banner ads. Yeah, they are. Look, this is just an. <laughs> Someone's paid to be here. That's pretty interesting. Oh, this is this is perfect. I'm really glad I did this. So yeah, just choose your choose your uh, shades and just sh uh, shade basically. So every time you have a background color, I'll show you how I'll show you what I mean. But every time you have some kind of color, just make sure that you are sticking to the same color. So yeah, just quick shout out to Surin. Uh, comments on every single one of my posts. Uh, sorry, videos. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, select a color scheme and keep it throughout. Select a typeface, so a font, and make sure you're always using the same name. Okay, so when I sign up to Instagram, I should be trying to get the profile.me, and I should use the same shade of blue when I do, you know, everything. I'm gonna have to redo my logo, I think, because yeah, it's the blue is too, the blue is too um, light, it, it won't work. And then also, yeah, the font. And then just keep all of this the same for your logo, et cetera, et cetera. I should have said this on the last video, but. Okay, so we, probably the most common question is uh, Elementor. 
should you use something like Elementor? And this page here, they actually built it with Elementor and it's actually surprisingly quick. Normally I wouldn't recommend using Elementor and I would definitely say be extremely careful when you do use Elementor. But it might just be worth it honestly because it makes it a lot easier and um, quicker, definitely. If you don't know anything about programming, use Elementor, okay? If you know a little bit about programming, I would probably just recommend what is called uh, Guten, which it basically just means the block editor that comes with WordPress. The reason that a lot of people like to use the block editor over um, using Elementor is because in order to use uh, CSS, like custom CSS on Elementor, you have to pay and also to do something, other things that you can easily do with code if you know what you're doing, you have to pay. So just because not everyone knows coding, I think for this uh, website, I'm gonna use Elementor and I'm gonna show people how to use it where you don't uh, bloat. Bloating means having too many like JavaScript or custom animations or large photos etc and that will make the website slower which makes the website rank uh, worse ideally you would want this number to be above 85 okay so you want to be constantly checking this all you do is you right click inspect on an incognito window then goes a lighthouse and then generate report okay you want to be doing this pretty much every time you release a new page on your website a blog whatever it might be Okay, I'm now gonna teach you about website structure. This is absolutely vital, guys. You're gonna have to watch this part. I hope I explain this well. Okay, so website structure. We have, for example, the... Okay, so you have your website and then you have a slash here, okay? We can decide what we put in this slash. And let me show you what I mean. We can do slash NFTs. Or, if we really wanted to niche down, we could do something like slash how. Okay, so this, this section here, these are our category pages, okay? And these have power in themselves. And that is why we actually do the structure. So instead of just having, let, let me show you on the website, I think it's actually easier. So. I hope you can see this. The crypto file.me slash generating 10,000 NFTs for free. We can either have that or we can have a parent or category and then the actual blog post itself. Okay. So the way this works is the category is its own page. Okay. So this is the category page. Uh, this is. Okay. So this is the parent or category page here. And then on this page, we will have one article about how to generate 10,000 NFTs, one article about how to make layers, one article on how to upload to IPFS, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this kind of structure has a much better structure to it than something where it's just, where you just have blog like this. It's much better to use category pages, trust me. So just one of the things we're gonna talk about is making a content plan. But before I talked about that, I wanted to quickly mention site structure so that you understand what I'm talking about in the plan. Now, let's make a content plan for this website. In this content plan, there are gonna be five parent pages and each parent page is gonna have five child pages so that's five different categories with five different um, blog posts, basically, in each. Let's just get into it. I want you to open a blank Google Sheet. Okay, so one of the easiest and best ways to do this, as usual, 99% of SEO is honestly just copying other people. Have a look at a competitor. These guys here, they're, they're legit. You can kind of see that they know exactly what they're doing. So blockchain, crypto, trading, DeFi, NFT, that sounds good to me. So blockchain, DeFi. I might replace DeFi with web. I might, in fact, I'm gonna replace trading with web three. 
I know that's part of DeFi, but I just don't. I don't want to do trading because I don't know enough about trading. Basically, NFT. What was the other one? Oh, interesting. I'm just looking at their structure here. They've got um, categories, and then inside their categories, they have. Um, yeah, like niched down. This is probably better actually. I'm gonna do it like this. And then if you click, so yeah, they've got the category which is blockchain. And then they've got, it's in Italian. Uh, this is this means regulation as a separate category, like a sub niche. This is security, uh, this is events, and this is, I don't know what that means. Oh, it means interviews, okay, interesting. Okay, so I'm probably actually gonna do something like this. So let's create this content plan. It's still relevant, what I was talking about before. It's just the way that we're gonna set it up on WordPress is a little bit different. Uh, but if you actually click on one of these, the blog posts, it just go to uh, the date permalink structure, which is kind of interesting, but also kind of strange. But yeah, let's, let's make a content plan. Okay, so in this video, we're actually gonna do our first piece of writing. And each of these category pages needs a category title, and it needs a category description. This is exactly how I suggest you do a um, content plan. You can think about the blog posts later. I'll talk about blog posts in the final video of this series. But for now, this is going to be the structure of my website. So it'll be something like this. Cryptofile.me slash smart contracts slash ERC1155, which is a protocol uh, for smart contracts, if you don't know. And then slash, and then it'll be like how to launch a ERC1155 smart contract. Okay, so this URL structure I prefer, and another thing you can do is you can already make the link here, and that will help you if you're writing content before releasing the content, if that makes sense. But because we're already live on the web, on the web, etc., it doesn't really make sense to do it like that. So I would just stick to, um, yeah, creating the plan and then knowing where you're going with everything, and then if you actually write any content, make sure that you know whether to you know to link to the parent pages here okay so I think what's probably going to be best is I am actually going to write an article because I will need it as an example and I'll show you the article in the next uh, video for now I'm happy with what we've covered in this video the website design and also making sure that you know exactly how your website will be structured anything after this the blog posts etc you don't need to worry too much about them i'll just do some category titles and category descriptions so you know what to write okay so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to use um i'm going to use jasper because i'm lazy and i don't want to have to write all of these myself so i'm going to go to the top answer and probably just gonna copy this like this I'm just too lazy to write and then I'm gonna say put that in the content brief and then I'm gonna say what is a ERC1125 token and then I'm gonna do control J hopefully that will give me what I want I'm probably not going to use Jasper too often, but just for this exact thing, I think I would recommend using it personally. So I can stick that there. That should go directly into it. Perfect. Okay, so this is a really, really good reason why I actually recommend doing a content plan is because I already realized that doing each smart contract like that individually was stupid and instead doing it by the actual cryptocurrency that it's related to is a much better idea. I've written these category titles, I wrote them myself, um, 
yeah, it's pretty easy. It, I don't really know how to teach you how to do something like that. But basically what you can do is you can take each one and you can put it into, uh, what's it called? You can put it into Jasper and then you can just see what Jasper comes out with. And if it comes out with complete trash, you can change what Jasper's actually doing to make it come up with something better. But that actually yeah, is perfect. God, I love Jasper. <laughs> okay, great. That's Jasper just makes my life so much easier, honestly. Uh, if it's doing this, guys, go to Format, Wrapping, and then do Wrap. Did I mean Wrap? No, maybe not. Format, Wrapping, Clip. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, that'll have to do. Nice. Uh, yeah, so you do that for each one. So let's do, let's just try another one, I guess. Oh, that was the wrong one. That was for that one. Okay. Let's do this and let's see what it comes out with. If this is good again, then honestly, Jasper is the best tool in, in the world. If this is completely different, mm, it's pretty much the same. Out of web. Okay. I would probably recommend writing a bit more. It's just I'm kind of in a rush and I want to get this done. But this is basically the process. You do this for each one. And then when it actually comes to it, you want to upload them to your website. So like I said yesterday in yesterday's video, if you ever want to get back to your admin, just go to your website slash WordPress admin. And then you're instantly logged in. And then what you want to do is you want to add them as pages. The reason you want to add them as pages is because pages have the parent structure. And all you do is you, first of all, you do the parent page. So you copy smart contracts into here. And then you would probably write some content normally, but I'm actually not going to right now just because I need to get this done. So you publish it um, and yeah, definitely write some content here. Please don't do what I'm doing and just leave them blank. But I just want to quickly show you how to set this up. And then once you've published that and you've written content for it, you want to add another new page and you want to write Matic or Matic. And then you want to write some content about how smart contracts and Matic are together. So for example, like uh, writing smart contracts or Matic and Ethereum. Learn how to write math. Okay, for example, and then I'm actually, you want to go to permalink here, and then you want to, sorry, you want to go to page attributes, and you want to click on parent page, and then you want to find smart contracts. You want to click smart contracts, and then I'm going to publish this again. And then if I go to view page, you'll see exactly what I've been talking about in this video, which is the cryptofile.me slash smart contract slash matic with some nice juicy SEO. And then basically I will add the blog posts to this page that are to do with matic smart contract as I write them. Okay. Everything else, guys, um, website design is not something I want to spend too long on. You can just copy the structure of one of these templates and just put all of your own stuff in. It's really, really simple, guys. And yeah, this is more of an SEO course. So I want to focus on all of the things that are important for SEO, which is exactly what I've done in this video. Make a content plan, keep it organized, and I'll see you very soon with the next episode, which will be how to start again to gain authority for your website. Okay, so we're gonna sign up to help a reporter, we're gonna sign up to a few different things, and we're gonna start really pushing our website. I'll see you soon, peace out.